Hey everyone, this is going to be my rocking horse build showcase for the upcoming competition happening on December 5th, 2023. And let me tell you right now that this one is a challenge, okay? It was challenging enough for me to build and balance it out. And then there's the added challenge that you're not going to make enough money to even pay the wages on this. So you're going to have to come up with a plan to do that. And I will be talking about different things you can do in order to accomplish that. But yeah, the build I'm going to show you is inspired by the Rocking Horse build showcase that I made last year for that first Rocking Horse competition. It's not the exact same, of course, because I'm using a different biome. And also the numbers have changed for the crafting requirements as well as cash values they're not the same as last year but with that out of the way i'm just going to get right into it and do my best to explain everything to you so i'm going to show you how it's performing show you what every building is making then show you auto trade and the visualizer and then we'll talk more about other things we can do so it's making 43 rocking horses per hour it's been running for four hours now i think it's a good build but i'm not exactly sure i would think that if you get to the point where you built this and you have have it running for a certain amount of time in the competition then you're gonna win because i don't think many people will actually be able to build this entire thing and then keep it running for more than a couple hours if they don't plan ahead now i am going to scroll through the production monitor but i'm not going to be explaining exactly what everything is like how balanced it is because there's a lot of items involved in this build okay but if you want to pause and take a look at a certain production then go ahead now you can't see the wood but it is doing 2400 wood per hour that is quite a lot of wood because this is a wood heavy build and i'm sure you already know that and you can already tell by the trees there are different ways you can make this for example one with a nuclear power or one without nuclear power but i have chosen to use the nuclear power that way i can provide passive energy to the pottery shops whereas you would have to build wind turbines to manually craft energy for the pottery shops if you don't use a nuclear power of course all the crops are going to be on the southwest corner where there are two adjacent rivers so starting with the crops there are a total of 27 tree farms for all of the wood that you're gonna need for all of the items involved in rocking horses there's also 11 oak tree farms the oak wood being used for the rocking horses there are seven peppermint fields they are not negatively impacted by shade so you can have them close to the buildings there are two cotton fields there are three three clay fields, two next to the river, one over here close to the pottery shops. The clay is picked up by the forklifts, but also picked up by the pottery shop workers. Here's the nuclear power that I'm using to provide passive energy to all the pottery shops. I'm using six pottery shops to craft ceramic bowls. None of them have any dirty, so they are all on a green craft timer. Those ceramic bowls are used to make honey and honeycombs. So I have two beehives on the left making honey and the other three beehives on the right are making honeycomb. All the bees go to the clover fields to get the nectar, so there are a total of 16 clover fields here five lumber mills making lumber lumber is used on the beehives as well as the mines as well as the fabric plants so you got to be balancing lumber between three different things and multiple crafts between those three different things because there are different things you're making in the mines as well as different things you're making on the beehives then you also have the water facilities so i am using seven water facilities all have the three passive water that they need in order to make water drums which are delivered to the closest warehouse which should be these two right here water drums being used by the mines so there are a total of nine mines two are making iron four are are making limestone and three are making chromium i'm just gonna show you from bottom to top i think that would be easier you'll be able to see it on the visualizer so it goes iron chromium chromium limestone limestone chromium limestone limestone and then the very last one is iron that's the order that i have them in in order to balance those products out and you're gonna want to probably mess with that in if you're trying to make tweaks to this and trying to get one of a certain mineral more than the other ones and and if you're trying to make this cash neutral or cash positive, you're gonna want to make more iron. And I will talk about that again later on. So then I have three fabric plants making the cotton yarn. In order to balance this, really, you just need a look at your cotton production rates it's really not that hard and then i have seven sand mines making silica so this 
time silica is an interesting thing because they are all on a red craft timer the only way to make them on a green craft timer is to give them the passive sandy and you can only get the passive sandy effect from either an ocean edge or a desert edge or the desert biome which would provide sandy to all the tiles but in this case we are not given any of those in this biome selection now there may be other ways to get the green craft timers for the sand mines and that would be using nfts that provide passive salty however we don't exactly know if this is intended in the game but last i checked it did work but just keep that in mind i have no idea if it'll work during the competition since we don't exactly know if it's even intended to work but yeah for this build it's using seven sand mines on a red craft timer so it crafts them slower than usual but that's all the silica needed to in order to make the molten glass so there are four glass factories making the molten glass they're using the silica chromium and limestone then we have for wizards workshops the two next to the pantry and all the beehives are making glue because they utilize the honeycomb honey and clay lumps so they're able to get everything next to there and then we have two across the street next to the pottery shops making mystic matter that uses the glue that was made from these wizards workshops as well as the cotton yarn and some limestone so you have to be balancing limestone between the wizards workshops as well as the glass factory keep that in mind then moving on there are are four master wizards right here next to the silo making enchanted objects using the mystic matter that was crafted from the wizards workshop as well as the molten glass that was crafted from the glass factories they're next to the silo because they all have to pick up peppermint to make the enchanted object so it's less of a um, time wasted on walking basically right same thing with the fabric plants going to the silo to collect cotton that's why they're close to the silo now moving on the final step would be the santa's factory so there are three santa's factories making the rocking horses they collect the oak wood from the nearby lumber yards so they pick it up pretty quickly the iron is also picked up pretty quickly and yeah even the enchanted objects that's picked up from the closest warehouse which is either going to be over here or over here but they don't have to walk that far in order to get the enchanted object so that's the entire process of getting to rocking horses i know it's a lot now moving on to the workers there are 15 loggers because yes there's a lot of trees involved so you need a lot of loggers there are two tractors to pick up the peppermint and the cotton there are three forklifts the forklifts picking up clay lumps from the clay fields the silica from the sand mines and crude oil from the oil pumps then we have five beekeepers there are two over here next to the pantry and three over here next to the peppermints so they're in charge of taking ceramic bowls and lumber to the beehives and picking up the honey and honeycomb taking those to the pantry and then we have two dedicated builders i have one here and i have one over here now moving on to the storage there is one silo for the cotton and the peppermint one storehouse that only stores glue you really don't even have to auto sell glue since that's the only item in the storehouse then there's a pantry that stores honey and honeycomb you do need to auto sell those since you're balancing two items and those are kind of hard to balance to be honest and then there's a fuel storage for your petroleum crude oil and gasoline there's a total of six warehouses since there's a lot of products that go into the warehouses so there is two over here next to the mines then there is one on this side one right here so basically they're both next to that power plant there's one over here and then there's one close to the wizard towers over here total of six warehouses spread around also there are two lumber yards one next to the santa's factories and one next to the fabric plants for passive gasoline we have the two power plants for refinery in between them making gasoline with the two water pumps behind it for refinery to the side making petroleum the fuel storage is rotated so that it is directly across from the refinery making petroleum this will help speed up the process of making petroleum since a lot of gasoline actually has to be made for this to work there is no oil seep so no passive crude oil right so i have to make oil pumps there are eight oil pumps and that's 
gives me enough gasoline to be able to comfortably sell all the excess products while always still having excess gasoline. Now, the reason you need that much crude oil for the gasoline is because in case you're not aware already, but just as a reminder, it's going to be two gasoline to sell every single product. And the trade time is a minute and 20 seconds. So it is actually very time consuming. And talking about the trade time, I have to Trade Depot because of that reason. As for other buildings, there are a total of four power plants. That is to provide passive energy, not just to the refineries, but you also want passive energy to all of the mines. The limestone and chromium mines requiring three energy in order to craft products. The iron one only needs one passive energy. You need passive energy for your fabric plants. You also need passive energy for your sand mines. And you can't have any of those buildings close to the pottery shops or else it will cast dirty on them. So is that clear everyone? <laughs> I think that was the entire build pretty much explained. I showed you all the buildings. Now let's move on. For auto trade, I have almost everything at a quantity of 10 or 12 of course rocking horses you can just have that at 10 but everything else should work just fine at a quantity of 12 that way you always have two extra items to spare for whatever you're trying to make now lumber i do have that at 20 that's just in case i overproduce lumber because i do need to have oak wood in the storage as well for the rocking horses but you could also just have that at 12 you're not auto selling gasoline petroleum or crude oil and you also don't need to auto sell glue but i do have it being auto sold that way i can get some extra cash here's what the build looks like on the visualizer total cost is 51.7 million cash that doesn't include the cash that you'll need to spend in order to clear out all the trees and the rocks and to build the steel mill in order to get the steel or the nuclear power so just keep all that in mind you're probably looking at closer to 60 million cash to build just to be safe and then wages are 49,630 per minute that's basically three million per hour in wages so over the course of 24 hours that alone is 72 million so imagine if you run this build for two days then that's 144 million cash that you're going to spend on wages i just want to make that clear because in a moment i'm going to talk about the cash deficit i'm going to scroll down so you could see all this but you can find a file to this visualizer on my discord server and an invite link to the discord server is in the description of the video no NFTs are required in order to get to this production rate, but the enchanted ornament NFTs to reduce the wages will help significantly, as well as many other NFTs that you can use to actually increase the production rate. Okay, so let's talk about the cash deficit in this build. So I mentioned it was about 50,000 per minute on the wages without ornaments, but with ornaments, it's closer to 40,000 per minute. That makes sense since having the correct set of enchanted ornaments will reduce the wages by 20%. I can't turn that NFT off. That's why I'm always running it. But even with those NFTs, this is cash negative or deficit in cash. I broke down the numbers here and I'm going to share them with you. So this is selling 43 rocking horses per hour, which would give you 1 million cash per hour. Then it is overproducing iron on purpose. 43 iron is being used for the rocking horses with the other 47 iron being sold. The iron is cash boosted at 10,000 each. So 47 iron, that's 470,000 extra cash. And then it's auto selling other excess products. So it's about 100,000 cash there. So when you do the math without any ornaments NFTs, you're going to be losing 1.4 million cash per hour. If you happen to have ornaments, then it's you're losing 800,000 cash per hour. So either way, you're going to be losing cash, but you can see the ornaments are going to help you out. Now you can always use the oopsie NFT if you happen to have that. And it'll also give you 5% more cash for all the sales you make. So this one will help you out with that as well. But what I'm trying to say here is that if you run this, you're going to constantly lose cash. Like whenever I first started testing this, I had a built out of course i made tweaks but whenever i had to build out i had 40 million cash and now i'm down to 23 million so if i run this for another 23 hours or so i'm gonna be out of cash here's what i suggest if you are thinking of using this design you need to save up a lot of cash okay you're gonna probably want to save up 60 million just to build this and then you're gonna i would say since you're losing about 1.5 mil per hour you're gonna want to save up 70 million extra cash just 
to pay your wages 80 million if you want to be very safe about it in case something goes wrong and you're not selling enough rocking horses right you're looking at a total of 130 or 140 million cash in order to build everything and have enough wages to pay for 48 hours mind you that's just to pay the wages for 48 hours so what i suggest is the first 20 hours or so you make your rush to get cash that can either be a gold rush i have a video on a gold rush that does a thousand five hundred gold per hour that makes about seven million cash per hour so you run that for 20 hours it gives you 140 million cash or you could do iron rush since iron is cash boosted the thing is that's going to use up a lot of wood and you only have one mountain side so i'm not exactly sure how much cash you can get just from iron alone but you would need at least 700 iron in order for it to match the 1500 gold per hour that i know that you can make now another thing you could do is tweak this build or come up with your own design that is different that will utilize more mines making iron if you do that you're going to need more water facilities making water drums which is not a big deal but you're also going to need more trees for all the wood that you'll need and probably another lumber mill to make more lumber now of course this all depends on which nfts you're using but if you are making say an excess of 200 iron per hour then you'll probably sell enough iron on the side to keep this cash neutral or very likely cash positive right but you're wasting a lot of space doing that so you are probably not going to have the same production rate as a design where you are not making that much iron right that's what i'm trying to say so you could go at this multiple ways you could do what i did in this design and focus on a high production rate but a cash deficit or make something that's cash neutral but you're going to waste a lot of space so you're not you're probably not going to have the same production rates but once again if you you want my suggestion what i would do i would run that gold rush for the 20 hours the first day yeah i know it seems like a long time the first day you're pretty much just building a gold rush and then the second day you would actually finish out the rest of the build and then you'd run it until the end of the competition i think you would do well if you went with that strategy but if you have another strategy you want to do then go for it i hope this design was able to help you out or give you an idea of what to expect for the rocking horse competition feel free Free to leave a like leave a comment consider subscribing if you haven't done so if you ever want to help support the channel you can use the links in the description of the video as always i appreciate your support and thank you for watching